From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Shell Oil is having problems with one of their drilling rigs due to recent storms. High winds and rough seas in the Gulf of Alaska have prevented crews from checking an oil drilling ship for damage after it was grounded off of an uninhabited island. NBC's Adam Pinsker has more. The Culloch is upright, rocking with a slow motion, but stable. There is no indication of a spill. At the mercy of Mother Nature, nearly 500 members of the Unified Commander and Kodiak to help dislodge and salvage the Culloch oil rig, which ran aground Monday evening. The command says tropical storm force winds and massive waves have made those efforts extremely difficult. We're operating in a, in a marine environment in Alaska where we're moving in the winters of Alaska, which are extremely challenging um, conditions. Two ships, the AVIC and the Alert, had been struggling with those conditions for several days as the vessels attempted to move the Culloch to Seattle for repairs. The Coast Guard says around 4.30 Monday afternoon, the AVIC separated from the Culloch 15 miles offshore from Kodiak, and at that point, officials decided it was safer for the Alert to guide the rig to the safest place possible for grounding. The Culloch ended up southeast of Kodiak at Sikalidak Island. The current on-site observations uh, give no indication that we have current environmental or wildlife impact. Environmental monitoring will be in effect until salvaging is done. Nearly 150,000 gallons of diesel fuels on board the Culloch along with 12,000 gallons of hydraulic lubricants. President Barack Obama has signed an executive order that will provide pay raises for both federal workers and members of Congress. The order will raise senators and representatives' pay from the average of $174,000 a year to $174,900. Both Alaska senators, Republican Lisa Murkowski and Democrat Mark Begich, say they oppose the automatic pay raises. Murkowski said she supports the congressional pay freeze that has been in effect since 2013. Uh, from earlier this year, Senator Begich posted on his Facebook page that the American people don't get automatic pay raises and neither should members of Congress. Fairbanks Police Department has been investigating a string of burglaries stemming from September 2012. The most recent burglaries targeted the Shoppers Forum Mall. Police have investigated seven burglaries of businesses this year, but the recent attack was the largest. On Monday, FPD arrested the possible suspect identified as 39-year-old Carl E. Gage. Gage has been charged with 17 counts of burglary 2, 15 counts of theft 2, 15 counts of criminal mischief 3, Theft 3, DWSOL, and parole violation. The news center spoke to Detective Jim Gibson about the case. We're confident that we've been able to positively link him to about 19 different burglaries, um, including the Shoppers Forum one uh, most recently, uh, which I think had seven businesses in it, um, as well as the Larson's, Coin King, and several of the other ones on the College Road area. Um, we believe that he might be involved in as many up to s maybe six more possibly. Video surveillance is the biggest help for us to do our job. And in this particular case, um, that's what helped break it. Officers and senior NCOs of the 1st of the 25th Striker Brigade Combat Team Brigade Troops Battalion undergo constant exercise and training to be ready for their next mission at a moment's notice. One of the tests was called Tour de Hell. Army Specialist Andy Geisler has details in this week's military report. The event's purpose was to physically challenge the soldiers as well as test their knowledge of basic warrior tasks. Some of the challenges the soldiers faced include an eight-mile rock march, equipment swim, radio assembly, and loading and unloading a Chinook helicopter. The Tour de Hell also gave the soldiers of the BTB a chance to better get to know one another. Yeah, there's a couple things we're doing. We're building the esprit de corps uh, in the unit. It's a way for everyone to come together, um, get a little mud on the uniform, get out, get dirty, uh, get tired, sweaty. Uh, so this is a way for everyone in the battalion to get to know each other. Uh, do something that's a little challenging, but it's also a lot of fun. The Tour de Hell was a great opportunity to strengthen the BTB Grey Wolves' unit cohesion and morale. Army Specialist Andy Geisler, Fort Wainwright, Alaska. The 
Military Report is brought to you by Stanley Nissan. Innovation for all. All right. Well, when we come back, officials investigate a fire at the downtown post office. Also, when we return, the first born locally in 2013. Stay with us. This edition of the Fairbanks Evening News is brought to you by Northland Hearing Services. Better hearing with a human touch. Welcome back. Local fire officials are trying to figure out exactly what happened that left a man with serious burns at the downtown post office on Barnett Street yesterday. A person that appeared to have been sleeping on the floor in the P.O. Box hallway apparently had caught fire. That person sustained serious burns and was taken to Fairbanks Memorial Hospital and later medevaced to a burn center in Seattle. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to call 450-6615. New Year's is a special time that many spend celebrating the New Year's, the year's end, and also a new beginning. However, for two very special ones here in the interior, it will now also be their birthdays. The new center takes a look into two special little babies who were born in the interior on New Year's Day 2013. New Year's Day is a time to celebrate the coming of a new year, but for two families in the interior, January 1, 2013 will now also be a birthday. The first baby born in the interior was little Miss Gwendolyn Munier, born at 5.56 a.m. at the Bassett Army Hospital to parents Valerie and Sergeant Richard Munier. Valerie, a native Alaskan, said she was surprised when she went into labor, as it was earlier than expected. I didn't expect it at all. I, my due date's January 5th, so I thought she would just be in there until then, but last night she just decided to come. Another pleasant surprise for the Munier family was having Sergeant Richard Munier home for the birth. Last year he was deployed with the Striker Brigade combat team and returned home in April. Serving his country, he also missed his first daughter Shayla's birth, so this was a day for the family to celebrate. It's been great having him home, especially here for the birth too, because he missed our daughter's birth by two days. We have a three-year-old daughter at home. Her name is Shayla. So this is little sister, and um, it was just very nice and comforting to have him home. Along with the Munier family, Fairbanks Memorial Hospital also had one sole birth on New Year's Day 2013. It was a boy named Jameson Liam Monier, born at 6.54 p.m. to parents Jennifer Roof and Joshua Monier. This little one was late for his arrival by five days. It's a little exciting, I guess. We weren't really planning on him being you know, first or anything. We kind of was hoping he'd be soon, <laughs> sooner than anything, but he just kind of, he was ready. We were going to do some today anyway if he didn't come, but so he, he decided he wanted to come on his own. January 1st of each year will be a special day for these families, one that the parents look forward to. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to, we'll, we'll have a special birthday, that's for sure. Wow. It's like they were meant to have a baby on the same day because it's uh -huh. Monier and Monier. Wow. Or Munier. Munier. It, it's crazy. <laughs> it was like they meant to have the baby on the same Very day. Very cool. Wow. You know what's meant to happen right now? We turn to Introducing Joe Cook Joe. right now. Yeah. Yes. What's going on, Joe? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I got cooking today. We're starting off the new year with a lot to talk about in sports. We're going to see how the Ice Dogs did in California. Hmm. And then the basketball teams, they're going to be back in action very soon. And a living legend retires. That's coming up next in sports. Okay. But before we go to break, over the past year, we here at KTVF have been through a lot, including changes in personnel and a big move. So before we go to break, we wanted to leave you with some of our favorite moments, memories, and mess-ups from 2012. <laughs> no. You're, you're going to try to record something and then use it as blackmail later. I know this game. Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe, Ke Joe Cook. Oh, my gosh. Did I forget my name? No, I didn't. It's Joe Cook. Center 11's Stephanie Woodard took a look into the program for our health report. Forgot her name for a second. Wait, but you're supposed to say, what's your resolution? And then I'm supposed to say, I have it all planned. Say, what's your resolution? All right. Okay. Welcome back, Interior Alaska. Fred Brown here rocking a Daryl Lewis-sized jersey. Oh, no. Hold on. Start. Wait, I have to say that again. Because I have to think of... I don't know science. I hear the jury's still out on science. Still to come tonight on New Center Final, a popular ice rink on Fort Wainwright may be closing due to... something. 
cut. Billy Sundgren is leaving us. This is her final broadcast. Yes, it is. I am yes, your de facto is. FTD florist. <laughs> Have you found a dead turkey in your backyard? It might be the work of justice somewhere. I could struggle with it once, you know, one time just for laughs. Baggage was it asked about me. the contentious atmosphere that existed in Washington, D.C. between the sharks I and the jets. Okay, three, two. <laughs> I hate you. One. Someone did something real. Someone did something in real life. Oh gosh, to do that again. Oh, we got to do that again. Ah! Be a little bit more rambunctious and honoring. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've been pretty tame over this past year, and kind of really just want to, uh, you know, rise to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the Law Office of Rita T. Alley. Peace of mind through professional legal services. Happy New Year to you and yours. Joe Cook here for you in the sports seat for the first time in 2013. We're starting this new year off white with the bang because it's time for some sports. The Fairbanks Ice Dogs into 2012 was uh, less than memorable. After losing 4-2 on Friday, the Ice Dogs evened the three-game series 5-4 on Saturday. The Ice Dogs were ahead 4-3 going to the final period when David Lowe scored what would be the game winner at the 5-54 mark. Steve Perry played in his first game back from an injury and made 17 saves. Sunday's game went to the limit as the Monsters decided the game 2-0 in a shootout. The Ice Dogs had a 2-0 lead in the second period before the Fresno Monsters rallied, tying, tying the game in the third. The, that charge was led by Mitchell Snyder's two goals for Fresno. Fairbanks didn't convert on their five power play opportunities. Steve Perry made 17 of 19 saves in that one. Now the Ice Dogs gear up for a big series this weekend as they visit the Wenatchee Wild in Wenatchee, Washington. The Ice Dogs trail the Wild by five points for the top spot in the West Division. After dismantling the Dallas Christian Crusaders before the Christmas break, the Nanix women's basketball team will try to shake things up against two ranked GNAC opponents to start 2013. Thursday night at 7, the Nanix will host number 9 Simon Frazier in the Patty Center. Simon Frazier comes in with a 9-1 and one record and two wins in the GNAC. The Klan are stout defensively, allowing around 52 points per game. That's best in the GNAC. They are led by the 5th and 6th leading scorers in the conference. In Nate Raincock and Cunye and Aaron Chambers. But the Nanix come in leading the conference in steals and offensive rebounds, grabbing about 17.9 per game. And the Nanix will host Western Washington on Saturday. After 16 days off, the Nanix men's basketball team are traveling to start 2013. The Nooks are coming off a huge 124 59 win over Monoma before the break. Can they take that scoring into Ellensburg, Washington? They play the Central Washington Wildcats tomorrow and then go to Nampa, Idaho to face the Northwest Nazarene Crusaders. The Nanooks are playing solid with a plus seven point differential and out rebounding their opponents by eight. The Wildcats have the number one score in the GNAC with Mark McLaughlin's 23.2 points per game. The Nanooks will have to protect the ball as well. The Wildcats lead the conference in steals at 9.8 a game. Last season, the Nanooks split the season series with the Wildcats. And earlier today in a press conference, the one and only Ray Lewis announced he will retire at the end of the season from the Baltimore Ravens. The 37-year-old Lewis played 17 seasons, all with the Ravens. The epitome of a leader in team sports, Ray Lewis' impact on the game and his connection to football fans is just undeniable. I mean, who wouldn't want to play with Ray Lewis? He can motivate you to run through a wall 
or simply tackle the guy in front of you. The, the 1996 first round pick out of Miami led one of the best defenses in NFL history to a Super Bowl title in 2000. Lewis, the 12 time pro bowler, is one of four players in NFL history with 30 interceptions and 25 sacks. Ray Lewis was a two time NFL Defensive Player of the Year and all pro selection seven times and led the Ravens in tackles in 14 seasons. When you see the number 52, you can't help but remember Ray Lewis. And tonight we announce our You Pick 'em Pro Football Challenge winner for the new year. This week's winner is, uh, set a drum roll, I'll do a dramatic pause. Robert Antisberger from North Pole. Congratulations, Robert. Robert will receive a free oil change on the house, courtesy of Jeans, Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep. If you want to be a winner, go on our website and put in your picks at webcenter11.com and keep playing. You could win the national prize, a trip for two to Hawaii. And finally tonight, we start a new contest for the NFL playoffs, the KTVF Playoff Pick'em. The NFL playoffs are set, and if you pick the right winners all the way up until the Super Bowl, you will receive a special gift from KTVF for the big game. Submit your picks to my email, joecook at ktvf11.com, or tweet me at ktvfjoecook, or you can tweet KTVF11 Sports. Pick the correct teams to win the wild card games, the divisional rounds, and the conference championships. The person with the correct picks and the best overall record will win the prize. Get in your picks before kickoff this Saturday. To be eligible, go on webcenter11.com sports for more info. Also tomorrow is the Mount McKinley Bank Tournament at Boilu Hall. The Monroe Rams host teams from Nome, Colony, West Valley, and Lathrop. The first game is at 3 o'clock. And that will wrap up things for the first sportscast of 2013. Thanks for joining me tonight. Be sure to catch us online at webcenter11.com or our YouTube channel, KTVF11 Sports, and Twitter at KTVF Joe Cook. Even in the new year, stay cool, Alaska. Mike Schultz has your full weather forecast coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Hey. 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 Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys. Yeah, Happy yeah, New Year, Happy man. New Year. And the temperatures were very comfortable, nice, nice for the outdoor activities. We had a great crowd to watch the fireworks up there on the ridge. And I had, boy, in my neighborhood, I must have had their own separate fireworks extravaganza going on because they were going on all night long, it seemed like. Yeah. I had sparklers. <laughs> oh, there you go. Keep it simple. I'm afraid of real big fireworks. <laughs> Let's go out to the airport and see what's going on. Three degrees currently uh, under basically high clouds out there. Our uh, high today for 14, the overnight low is three. Record high, 41, 2011. Record low, 61 in 1969. The sunrise this morning was at 10.53. Sunset exactly at 3 o'clock, which gives us four hours and seven minutes of daylight. And our winds are calm. The barometer is rising. And as far as what's going on for our picture for tonight, this one's sent in by Pat DeRyder, a beautiful after Christmas sunrise. And again, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send to Mike Schultz at ktvf11.com. Okay, our satellite picture tonight showing uh, uh, lots of clouds over the southern sections of the state. But you know what? When it comes in from the south, the Alaska Range blocks most of it out. And you can see the moisture is moving across the Prince William Sound area. A little bit of moisture across the southwest part of the state, too. But just mainly high clouds in the Fairbanks area. What's going on across the rest of the state? Well, we have a few showers around Ketchikan. Foggy conditions at Juneau. Nice mild temperatures at Kodiak. Raining there, 38 degrees, also 38 degrees around the Anchorage Bowl. Up and down the west coast, lots of clouds, but cooler temperatures too, 28 degrees in Nome. Not too bad in Barrow, 3 degrees below zero, and a nice day in Fort Yukon, 12 degrees above. Lower 48 weather, well, we have showers back into the picture over the Pacific Northwest, but nice weather over the Southwest. The Central Plains looking pretty good. Denver, 32 degrees, freezing. Chile in Minneapolis, 18 degrees. Nice weather over the Northeast and over the Southeast, too. And on our satellite picture, you can see a little band of moisture moving across the Gulf Coast states, but the rest of the country looking pretty good. Just a few high clouds here and there, a few splotches of light snow, and that's it. Another uh, storm system trying to move in across the Pacific Northwest, but it looks like, for the most part, that high pressure is going to keep it out. Now, the overall outlook for tomorrow is calling for blustery conditions and a cold air across the northern plains to continue, and cold air all the way down into the central plains. And for this weekend, the jet stream expect to take a, a real big rise in the uh, altitudes that will bring more warm temperatures across the western half of the country. Just the opposite across the Great Lakes. More snow expected there, more showers over the deep south. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. 
First of all, in the northern sections, isolated showers in Barrow with about zero degrees for the high there. We'll see snow at Nome with 28 for the high. And mostly cloudy skies in Fort Yukon. They're looking at 11 degrees after a high today of 12 degrees, so pretty consistent. In the interior, mostly cloudy skies. A few flurries around the Denali Park and Healy area, 35 degrees there in contrast. Quite a bit cooler in Fairbanks, 15. Over southeast Alaska, Looks like mixed rain and snow for Juneau with 34 for the high there. And Ketchikan, much warmer at 42. Rain expected in Ketchikan. Over the southwest part of the state, looking at mixed showers for Cold Bay and Kodiak. A little snow at Bethel. Temperatures 40 degrees at uh, Kodiak and 32 degrees at Bethel. And over the, uh, well, we'll get the, the kids' weather because we're running a little bit of time. So kids' weather watch, uh, as you can see, we're looking to this week for our weather fact. And the weather fact is that Halakela Summit in Hawaii recorded a 14 degree temperature, and that is the record all time high or overnight low for Hawaii anywhere. And amazing, too. Mount McKinley Bank, thanks for our sponsoring our Kids Weather Watch. And next week, North Pole Elementary will be our guest with uh, the beginning of school once again. Here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. As you can see, we're looking at zero for the overnight low, scattered high clouds, and tomorrow's forecast looking at 15 degrees, more clouds with temperatures near normal. Now, the fifth, the five-day outlook, as you can see here, looking at temperatures cooling off rapidly, in fact, dropping down uh, to the zero-degree mark for the high day, during the days, overnight lows in the teens below, maybe some light snowflakes possible over the weekend, but all in all, no real strong outbreaks of cold air on the horizon. Okay, now before we leave tonight, we wanted to let you know the Tag Store is the winner of our Season for Giving contest. They have won production and airtime on KTVF. The person who nominated them said the Tag Store, a consignment furniture store at 3550 Garrity in Fairbanks, is a noteworthy business that regularly does good things in our community and should be rewarded. Okay. So with that, we're going to say thank you for that, and we'll uh, get in contact with you for your prize. And from all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a great night. Good night.